Hello again everyone. This unit we're looking at exercise 6-6 six, six, loans. We're dealing with loans and when we do loan payments, loan payments are very much using the tools that we've learned about so far that is future value, present value, these sorts of things. Um, essentially we're looking at a couple of issues here and that is how do we calculate the size of a final loan payment and how do we calculate the size of equal loan payments. So again using the tools we learned we're going to apply this right now so let's take a look at a couple of the exercises in here just to, to kind of uh, get a sense of how to do this sort of thing so the first one I'm going to take a look at number 16.6 okay it says a three thousand dollar loan is set forth on March 1st six uh, percent uh, two payments are made. Uh, one payment is made on uh, May 1st of $1,000. Uh, another payment is made on June 1st of $1,000. And a final payment is made on July 1st of an amount that we're not sure of. So essentially what we're asking is what is that final payment? We're looking for that. And we're also looking to say, okay, um, how do we do this? Well, let's take a look. What we need to do is bring back each of these amounts that we're paying on these dates to the present value at 3000 and make it equal 3000 So we're going to take this 1000 here and we're going to calculate its value at the beginning of the period. We're going to take this thousand here and we're going to calculate its value at the beginning. And we're going to take this value here, even though we don't know it, and we're going to calculate its value at the beginning. And then we're going to make it equal to the 3000, and that way we'll be able to determine this one. So let's do this first one. I'll call this one A, B, and C. I'll call this one A. So what we're doing is looking for the present value. Uh, and we use the formula S1 plus RT on that. So the present value of, uh, in this case, $1,000, 1 plus, uh, and the R is 0 0.06 times, and how many months is it? 1, 2, 2 months of the 12. We do that and we get $990.10. So essentially, that amount there. $1,000 brought back is worth $990.10. B, we're taking the present value of the second payment that's made on June 1st. So again, using the same formula. And in this case, it's $1,000. 1 plus 0 0.06 times, and this is over here, one, two, three months. Three, three twelve. So we do that. And in this case, we get 985.22. So essentially, we have two. Essentially, we have the first two. The third one is the strange one because the third one we don't have a number for, but we do know that the same formula is used. So what we do is we'll just put, I'll call that S, this mystery amount here, 1 plus and the uh, 0 0.06 the rate times the time, as this is 4 months in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 months, 4 for 12. So what we what we'd have here is over 1.02. Now we can convert that into uh, we can put S down on the bottom. We take, uh, that's the same as a 1S, so we divide 1S by 1.02 and we get 0 0.98039S. So now that we've, so now that we've calculated these three, what we essentially do is set it up like this. Uh, 990.10 plus 985.22 plus 
039S equals 3000, which is the original amount of the loan. We bring this over, so that's 0 0.98039S equals 1024.68. We divide there to get S on one side. S equals 1045. 38. So essentially, uh, the, the value of the final payment is 1045 and change. So that's how that's done. The second type of scenario that's set up whenever we have loans is calculating equal payments. So we need to be able to figure out what equal payments are. So we'll do number five. It's a, it's a simple example here that illustrates it very well. Uh, essentially, when you look at number five, it says that a loan of $1,000 at 5.5% was repaid in two equal payments, made it 30 days and 60 days after the date of the loan, determine the amount of each payment. So we have a $1,000 loan. Uh, there's a payment made in 30 days and a payment made in 60 days. So uh, it's question mark what the payment is. So uh, essentially what we have to do is bring each one back to the value of 1,000 and make it equal to 1,000. So in this particular instance, I'll call this one A and this one B now for the purposes of working it out. So A is S equals, <coughs> or P, sorry. P equals S over 1 plus RT. And our S in this case is unknown. 1 plus uh, the rate is 0 0.055 uh, times, and uh, it's 30 days, so 30 over 365. And if we work that down even further, we'll say that's S over 1.0045. We do division on that. We take the 1S and we divide 1 divided by the 1045 will give us S on the top, which is uh, 0.9955S. So that's the first instance. Um, <clears throat> The second instance, B here, is uh, P equals S over 1 plus RT, and that's uh, S over 1 plus 0 0.055 times, and it's 60 days out, 60, 365, and that's the same as S over 1.0090. We take 1 divided by the 1.0099, and we get um, 0.9910S. So essentially we've got two of these and we're going to make them equal to a thousand. So the simple <coughs> the simple thing to do then is to see in both of them our S's we add them up. So 1000 equals and we take 0 0.99 and we take 0 0.99, we add it together as 1.9866S. Uh, we just do a simple division on that, and this is 50339. So in other words, each payment, two payments of 50339, which is a little more than $1,000, which makes sense because $1,000 is, is what we put in the beginning, and as time goes by, we'll be interested interest will accumulate on. So that that shows you generally how to do that. I'd encourage you to look at some of the problems there, some more of those problems. There are some more complicated ones, but they all work on that basic premise. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.